So then we can move up to the next presentation. So with me already is uh, Michael, Michael, yes. from EVT. EVT, that's iVision Technology. And he is also going to talk about, not surprisingly, about 3D. So uh, Michael is talking about smart 3D triangulation sensor with myriad deep learning support. So okay. here we go. Thank you. So thank you very much that I'm uh, that you're having me and um, let's start with um, the presentation today. Uh, uh, Smart 3D triangulation sensor. I want to um, tell you first of all something about uh, EVT to know why we did it uh, because it's not obvious. I think you heard something about triangulation a little bit earlier today and know now how it works and um, what our idea was uh, or what we really needed was uh, something with deep learning or where we could use deep learning algorithms in um, our software or in the solutions. So we started to develop a specialized sensor and uh, so I thought I want to tell you also a little bit about EVT but I think we skip it, maybe it's boring. Uh, but I think you can download it, uh, the presentation, I think so. And then you find all the details. So I will skip that and we'll go immediately uh, or very fast to the uh, real thing. So maybe we are from Germany, I told you, and we are in Karlsruhe and I skipped this very fast. Um, we are founded also in Germany a few years ago and you can find this also everywhere in our presentation. So the important thing is now um, we have um, our main USP is standard software for machine vision. Um, so we have one software for all platforms. This means also we always need hardware. And of course you saw all this hardware today. We support this, these hardware platforms with our software always um, to allow our customers to select what is the right hardware for their solution. But after a while we realized, of course, some customers need specialized hardware. And um, we, couldn't buy, we couldn't buy it, so we developed it by our own. And um, the, so this starts the smart sensor for um, wh what we are talking today. So we, we have all these different software tools and the interesting thing was then deep learning, uh, how can we bring it into smart cameras? We also support a lot of smart cameras in the industry, and, but at the end um, there was no smart camera with enough uh, calculation power to do um, deep learning or machine learning. And uh, that was the start when we said, okay, we need for our software uh, this kind of hardware. So this is a, a few to a 3D solution which is made with our standard software and you see all these different smart cameras uh, and some other cameras and uh, the interesting thing is you can, of course you can run deep learning in a PC. It's not a problem. You attach some additional um, uh, graphic card uh, to do it but uh, it's more difficult to do this kind of solution in, um, in a smart camera, like here finding defects in, uh, in wafers or recognizing any kind of patterns or finding small filament defects in cables or even find defects in lead frames. These are only a few examples when we start, which we could solve with our standard PC solutions, but we couldn't solve it with a smart device. And then was the question, how can we do this? Um, because we did a lot of 3D, the first approach was, let's make a 3D scanner. We did it. And um, I think you heard it, you may hopefully most of you um, uh, heard the, uh, the keynote from Photo Focus. You know now how the scanner is working. And of course, it's a laser triangulation. Uh, we simply added some dual core arm. We added some FPGA where we could do some 
machine learning stuff inside, also some laser, uh, 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 laser line extraction. But more important was then, we want to do deep learning. And it's difficult to make it, you could do it on ARM, but not very fast. And then we started, of course, with the second one. It was the Myriad from Intel. And later we saw, OK, maybe it's not the best uh, uh, device on Earth. And so we found Coral. It's a chip from Google. And it works very well. And we added this to uh, our device. And of course, we had added everything what you need normally on a 3D device, like PLCIO you need it if you do uh, industrial solution uh, encoder input. And of course, we added also a Geek-E interface to use the sensor as a sensor or as a smart camera. Both is possible. And in, in, in both cases, we could use these acceleration tools from the Coral chip to do uh, pre-processing either only from the laser line extraction or later for the complete uh, evaluation of the point cloud, which is captured into the smart device. And of course, because we are a software company, we want to do it very easy, or all our customers should be able to program it uh, remotely, uh, program it uh, either directly or remotely. So we have also an easy to use remote interface, which is for all other components from us. So the smart hardware with the Coral chip um, looks like this. Um, we, um, this is the, the inner parts of the 3D scanner in this case. You see on the, on the left side, you see the I.O. stuff in the middle. In the center, you see our pro CPU board with the Coral chip on board, which allows you direct access to the Coral chip. And on the right side, you see a fast 2D sensor, because as you heard it before today, uh, a triangulation sensor is a 2D camera with a laser inside. But beside of the, uh, with this, we could build a um, ready-made triangulation sensor. You see here inside uh, the main board, which we saw on, see on the left side, with the coral chip inside, which is for us for the uh, deep learning stuff. And on the right, uh, in the center, you see the areas uh, sensor, and on the right side, the laser, which is necessary to do the triangulation. M more interesting is, um, of course, because it's a platform, um, you have this platform, of course, for any kind of area scan camera or for, of a line scan camera. So we could do always this deep learning stuff in all these kind of hardware platforms. So on the right side, we see um, our thermal sensor, uh, which allows us, in combination with the 2D sensor, which allows us to do combination things like face or uh, um, human recognition and face recognition and detecting the temperature of, the, of a human. Or we use uh, a high-speed uh, area scan sensor and build a triangulation system and do the deep learning inside on board, or we have a line scan camera and do the same on the line scan camera. Um, that's the, the main uh, interesting thing. We have always this powerful coral chip inside, which en uh, enables us to do deep learning and machine learning inside of, um, uh, of the hardware. And always, of course, based on our software, of course, you can have this hardware with your own API. So a Linux system is running inside of the system, means um, uh, you can program it with C++ and use it with your own software, or you use our ready-to-use software to, um, to program it uh, only by drag and drop. Um, so what can we do? We have uh, on, on, the, on one side, we have the Zync. It's a FPGA-based uh, CPU with, um, uh, with, an FP, uh, with an FPGA, of course, or an ultra scale. You can get both of these uh, CPU platforms with Linux, which enables you to do a lot of things. And for, of course, you have the FPGA, which allows you to do either laser line extraction or some machine learning, depending on the sensor you have on the other side. 
And uh, as a result of this, you can get pipeline this directly to the Coral chip, which allows you then to do uh, very fast deep learning algorithms directly in the hard, in the smart hardware. So why finally we decided uh, decided to use the Coral chip instead of the Myriad? Uh, one uh, special um, uh, key, key was that this chip only uh, consumes four watt if it uh, if it uh, operates in full uh, speed. This means you have four trillion operations and you can really run all your networks inside. If you use, uh, for example, uh, TensorFlow, you can convert it to TensorFlow Lite and you run it in the Coral chip on board. Uh, you don't need a PC. So uh, independent if you have a 3D triangulation sensor or if you have um, a 2D area scan sensor with gray or color uh, imaging or the, a line scan camera. You have always this high-speed chip inside, which allows you to use your standard uh, deep learning uh, algorithms. And um, to allow our customers um, easier, the programming easier, we have um, pre-trained networks. That means um, you can uh, prove, uh, you can, um, uh, you get the advantage that we, you can use these networks to you do transfer learning to have a very fast access for deep learning in your solution. Um, and um, what we also allow, what we also can do for you, if you use our software, we can do the conversion of your network into our uh, uh, TensorFlow Lite network, which runs easily in the platform. So if you have some training data or pre-trained networks, we have the option to, uh, to transfer it directly so that you can use it in our smart hardware. Uh, this is um, the, the right picture. is only one example for a 2D evaluation. I used it to show you, for example, you can detect here cars or trucks or whatever. And um, the, the other really important thing of Coral is, in our opinion, you can do the trans tr transfer learning online in the smart camera. You don't need a PC. So, so you have uh, real on-site training in the factory floor. If you have a new, a new part um, which, you have to, uh, which have to be recognized, you simply um, add this part by, based on the transfer learning and you can run it immediately after you did the training with the Coral chip online and it runs. This is a very powerful um, ad, uh, advantage. And um, of course, here is, are some examples how easily you can use um, ready-made uh, networks to make your solution. So if you want to see this, we have it on our booth. Um, or you can download the software and you can test it by yourself. So it runs, as um, uh, I told earlier, it runs on a, a CPU or a GPU. Or if you have a Myriad chip, you could use also a Myriad chip or you use the Coral chip uh, instead of um, if you want to do it fast. If, uh, if you are only want to see if it's in principle, in principle possible to do, do the solution, then uh, you simply uh, can run it on your, uh, on your CPU and you see, okay, it's working. And then you can um, add additional um, parts to see that for your application it works. It's also possible to do your, let's say, um, solution in any kind of uh, worker assistant and this kind of stuff. So how, how is it trained or how can you train it online? Um, here you have uh, a an image of our standard tool set, uh, which first of all runs in the sensor if you don't program it by yourself or alternatively, um, you program it by your, uh, uh, with our software, then you have in the tool all the, all the uh, gadgets you need to um, train new parts and simply upload it to the, to the smart sensor. And uh, after you uploaded it, then it's ready for uh, evaluation. So that it's not 
too boring. I thought I have some examples uh, of uh, some um, deep learning stuff which we did in the smart sensor. And um, here we have this um, intro picture. This is a lead frame and you maybe see it, yes. Um, you see these green boxes. Of course, for some of the boxes you would say, okay, maybe it's possible to do it also with a blob. But you see also at the edges there are some very minor defects which you cannot do with a blob because it's at the edge. So these are simply tra uh, trained networks, especially made for, the, uh, for, for lead frames to find all these kind of filament uh, defects anywhere on, on a lead frame. Like you do it as a human, you look to it and say, okay, I see the defect. Uh, a, a deep learning network does it, and in this case, it does it inside of the smart sensor. Um, uh, of course, you, you find a lot of people who um, tell you, yes, we can do it, but uh, we can do it in a smart sensor is slightly different. Or, for example, this OCR reading, of course, I know this looks very, very nice, but um, of it's with, with all standard algorithms, it's very difficult to read it. And um, so we simply trained this network, and it reads the character set w uh, without any defect. You see, maybe you see the surface, and it's not uh, very homogeneous. So with all the standard algorithms, it works very difficult. Uh, with deep learning, you get immediately a solution. You can upload it in your sensor, and it works. Or uh, another um, part to, um, is to detect some patterns. Of course, you see, OK, I see all these white patterns everywhere. And no question, um, I can see it. But uh, the task is to recognize which pattern is where. And of course, we, if we have a close look to it, we see two patterns are identical, only with a different rotation. If you try to do it with the standard algorithms, you have the problem with the different color, coloring of the patterns. And some of the patterns are damaged due to the transport of the parts. And um, in, in this case, we simply train the network with the different correct patterns. And the network simply recognizes the right pattern at the right position in what uh, rotation ever, in what orientation. This is, um, and you can do it in the smart sensor. You don't need the PC. Or this other uh, option here is you have more and more critical cables in your cars. And um, if you uh, uh, produce the cables, you have always a problem that sometimes filaments are, um, filaments are there, which if you don't eliminate it, they generate a short, uh, shortcut, and the cable is not working. Then you find it only in the car. The question is how you will find it. Um, of course, if it's like this one, uh, you can do it with an algorithm, but it could be also anywhere uh, at any position. And um, so these are some examples which are not so obvious and not so easy to find, especially now this one here. Even as a human, you have to look somewhat close uh, to see that there are two filaments very close to the um, to the cable, and um, also we simply train this network. We have a cable network which knows filaments, cables, and cable types, and also the strings which are in the cable. And it, uh, if you say, "Okay, I want to find the filaments," it simply detects the filaments here. You see uh, an example, and also. Uh, also, again, in the smart sensor. You don't need a PC to do this. Uh, you have, uh, if you don't program it by yourself, you have this um, user interface to do the, uh, to generate the recipe. Uh, you simply select the cable network. If you have a special cable, you can add, uh, add your cable um, uh, by transfer learning, learning to the basic network, and you can make the solution based on this. And um, of course, this is a classical situation for a uh, neural network. And um, I think everybody who tried to make this kind of solution who knows, it's difficult even to find the number plate on the different cars, on the different lighting conditions, and wherever it is. And um, so 
if you use standard algorithms, it's really difficult and it's not very stable. If you have a well-trained network uh, with the target um, uh, uh, number of plates, uh, it simply recognizes it and um, generates as an output uh, the number plate um, which is read um, directly. So, finally, this was a short overview about um, um, the deep learning and machine learning stuff which we can do in this hardware platform which is open to be programmed by yourself in C++ or if you don't want to program it by yourself, you simply um, use our software and upload it uh, or you, uh, you can do the pre-training on your side uh, and give us the network to transfer it into the, into the specific hardware and therefore you have uh, immediately um, resolution for that. So this one is also not so important. We, I would uh, switch this over because um, of course today you can see us here. Normally you can see us on, can see the results and how, what you can do uh, on different shows. Today you see it on the vision show. We are in hall 10 where you can see also the hardware and you can test it by yourself if you want. And of course, we have one more exhibition this year where you can see the, uh, the, our hardware. And uh, finally, uh, if you want to test the software, and with this software you know then if it, run, it, it runs also in the smart camera, you can download our software directly and test it. Or you can see uh, how it works if you simply connect to one of our webinars or you go to our Q&A sessions and ask us if your application can run in these uh, smart sensors with the deep learning chip. And finally, I only can say thank you. I hope it was somewhat interesting for you. If you have questions, I'm in Hall 10, G57, uh, uh, where I can answer your questions or you ask me here, I'm happy to answer it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Michael, for your talk about um, Smart D, Smart 3D triangulation yes. and so many exciting um, application examples.